So in this video, I'm going to be talking about wave plates, uh, along with what they're used for and their associated Jones vectors, so how we, or their Jones matrices, how we deal with them mathematically. And so first, what are they useful for? Uh, well, one really cool thing they can do is they can rotate the polarization of an electromagnetic wave. So if I initially have purely X polarized light, so say this is X, Y, Z, then I can actually rotate that light uh, with a half wave plate. So uh, if I put a, a half wave plate, which is at the appropriate orientation, uh, I can actually turn that into Y polarized light with no losses in my system, which is sort of amazing. So I can turn a one zero Jones vector, which is just X polarized light into a zero one Jones vector. And similar, uh, an another thing you can do with wave plates, and this is uh, quarter wave plates, you can turn linearly polarized light into circularly polarized light. So X into X plus I Y, for example, uh, or the Jones vector uh, one zero can be converted to one I. Uh, and if we wanted to normalize everything, then we should put a one over root two out front. And so this is a what quarter wave plates are generally used for. So they allow us to convert linear uh, to circular polarization. So wave plates are really fundamental in letting us play with the polarization of light. And the reason we love them so much is because there's no loss involved in wave plates. They might have a very small absorption, so they uh, absorb a little bit of the light, but in general, there's virtually no losses associated with them, at least not with the fundamental mechanism that they use, which is really, really cool and very useful. So how do wave plates work? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, wave plates work, so let's, let's set up our coordinate system here. Say we've got x, z, uh, and Y, so our Y is the vertical axis. And let's say that we're sending an electromagnetic wave uh, into our wave plate. Now this wave plate is made out of just a chunk of material. Uh, usually it's a crystal that has uh, this property called birefringence. Uh, and so what, is, what does that mean? Well, it means that depending on the polarization of my light, so say this light is Y polarized, it's going to have a different refractive index. So it has some refractive index, let's call it NY. And similarly, if I had X polarized light coming into this crystal, it has a different refractive index. Let's call that NX. And so let's say that NX is less than NY. Then in that case, the velocity of light along the X direction, or the velocity of light that's polarized in the X direction, is actually going to be greater than that in the y direction. And so for this reason we're calling the x we're going to call the x axis the fast axis just because the light propagates with a larger phase velocity. And so I'm actually going to replace these uh, nx's and ny's with nf and ns because uh, this is more like what you'll see in the uh, in the standard textbook you pick up on optics. So here we've got nf is less than n s so our refractive index along the fast axis is smaller and so this means that light which is a wave will actually travel differently depending on the axis so in the case of the fast axis the wavelength is actually going to be longer than along the slow axis so our wave might look something like this as it propagates down the crystal whereas on the slow axis which has a higher refractive index our wave might be oscillating much more quickly. So it might look something like this. So this means we can introduce a phase difference between these two waves. So a phase difference between what we called our x-axis and what we called our y-axis. And this is the fundamental trick that lets us do super cool things like uh, rotate the polarization of light. Uh, but first, how do we model this, uh, just this phase difference um, phenomena in this in this crystal or in this wave plate. Well, let's say that we're first sending in X polarized light. So if we were to write out the full equation for that, we've got, uh, it's pointed in the X direction, it's got some amplitude, and it's propagating, it's a propagating wave, propagating down the Z direction. 
And I'm going to call the beginning of our crystal z equals zero, uh, just so we can figure out what happens by the time we get to the end, uh, z equals l. So for x polarized light, we said it had refractive index nf, uh, because our crystal axis uh, just happens to be oriented that way. So we can replace k uh, with k naught times nf, uh, and then we've still got z where k naught is just defined in terms of the free space wavelength, so the wavelength in vacuum or in air. So if we plug in z is equal to l, then we can figure out the total phase that this wave accumulates, uh, and that's just this guy right here. And so we can just pull this out front, uh, and we get e to the minus j k naught n f l, and then we've got our e to the j omega t. Now this is at z equals l, uh, if we want to know how it behaves outside the wave plate, so uh, once it gets back into free space, then we just need to add our minus kz again. And it's still a it's still a traveling wave as we leave. It's now just picked up this extra phase. Now, if you want to be super precise, uh, technically this is redefining uh, this point as zero and kind of smushing the crystal uh, all into one one point. So pretending the crystal, uh, doesn't exist and just has this effect of increasing the phase, but they're they're mathematically the same same thing But we know by now that there's a much easier way to deal with these effects on polarization And now that we've now that we know the phase that is added to this uh, Our polarized light we know how it affects our Jones vector so if we initially had just X polarized light uh, now all we need to do is multiply that by e to the minus j k naught n f l. And this is the, this captures the entire effect of the crystal along the x-axis. And you could do the same exact thing for, oh, for y polarized light. Uh, so y polarized light is just represented by a Jones vector of zero, one. And so it would just be multiplied by e to the minus j k naught n s l. So now that we know how our one zero light is affected, or our x polarized light, and our zero one light, our y polarized light, we can construct our matrix. It's just these two are the column vectors. So e to the minus j k naught n f l zero and zero e to the minus j k naught n s l. But we can actually make this prettier, and we can make it more interesting. Uh, generally, when we deal with wave plates, when we deal with other optical elements, we're not interested in the total phase. Uh, so I'm not interested that a wave went through four periods and then it came out of a wave plate. I'm really just interested in the relative phase between the polarizations. So we could modify this matrix just to discard the total phase information by just multiplying the whole thing by e to the j k naught uh, let's multiply by the fast axis and then we get a simpler matrix which is just uh, it involves a one and anytime you see a one in a matrix your life is going to be much easier and then here we've got e to the j k naught and now we've got n f minus n s times l and i'm just going to redefine or i'm going to define this thing called delta n which is just actually we said n s was bigger so let's say n s minus n f so delta n is positive then we have e to the minus j k naught delta n l and this is our final jones matrix this is the one that we're interested in uh, this is the one that gives us relative phase uh, between the X and the Y polarized light, which is generally the most physically meaningful uh, quantity. But even this is still kind of ugly, uh, and we'd really like to know how this relates to the things that we talked about in the beginning, uh, our half wave plates and our quarter wave plates, let's say HW and our and our quarter wave plates. So these are the most uh, the most common actual wave plates, the ones that you see in practice, the ones that you can buy off of Thor Labs or some other website. And half wave plates are just designed so that the length of the wave plate is just the wavelength divided by, well, you'd expect two, because uh, it's a half wave plate, multiplied by delta n, because we want the 
uh, difference between the fast axis and the slow axis to be a half wave. And so for a half wave plate, uh, our, if you plug in this L, your Jones matrix will just be one, zero, zero, minus one, which is beautifully simple. Like that's just wonderful. Um, similarly, if you have a quarter wave plate, so this was our half wave plate, uh, a quarter wave plate has a length that you might expect. It's just half of a half wave plate or lambda naught over four times delta n. And the delta n is just there because we want our, again, our difference between our slow and fast axis to be a half wavelength. And so this, the Jones matrix for this guy ends up being one, zero, zero, e to the minus j pi over two, which is just minus the imaginary number i. So this is our quarter wave plate. And these are the two most interesting and most powerful Jones matrices in, uh, in I would say, probably all of optics. Now, if you scour the internet, you might notice that some people write quarter wave plates uh, like this, so 100i. Zero, zero and this just has to do with the wave convention that they're using. So they're instead using e to the j kz minus omega t. But as long as you stick with the same convention when you're doing all the math, you'll get identical answers. Um, you might also see that there's this extra phase factor out front, so e to the i pi over 4, or I guess e to the minus i pi over 4 in, in the case of this matrix. This was just the thing that we discarded, or rather this is part of what we discarded because we're only interested in the relative phase between our two waves. Now things get really interesting when you start to rotate these by some angle theta, and this is what we'll cover in the next video. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.